Hi everyone, today I would like to talk about constraint list square. So in the last video I talked about multi-object list square and a video before that I talked about the list square. So the constraint list score is like a normal list score, but um, with the difference that it has a constraint or set of constraint, right? Like this one. So um, now the multi-objective list square also can be expressed as a constraint list square. So that's uh, like a, a special case of the constraint list square. So now let's start. So in a constraint list score, we would like to minimize an objective, the AX, norm of AX minus B square, like a normal list square. So this is called objective such that or subject to cx equal to d. What is this? Assume the c is p by n matrix. So we have p equation, right? And then x is a n-dimensional vector, so n variable. x is n by 1, d is p by 1, of course, because p by n by n by 1, when you multiply, you get p by 1. a is n by n matrix, and b is n by 1. OK, so. Now you can write this constraint as a system of linear um, equations. What I mean by that is if you go ahead and write C in terms of the row definition of C, right? So here C1 transpose, C2 transpose, all the way to CP transpose are the rows of matrix C, right? So C is P by N, so there are P rows, right? And then multiply by X, you get D. So CI transpose, X is equal to DI. Each of them is actually a linear equation. So like C1 transpose X equal to D1. What I mean by that is like this. C11 X1 plus C12 X2 all the way plus C1 N Xn. Remember C has N columns equal to D1. Right, that's one equation, linear equation. So you have P of this, right? So that's how you can express the constraint actually in a sort of the matrix vector format into um, the element wise actually uh, format. So we call it couple of definition. We call vector x hat to be feasible if it satisfies, satisfies the constraint. Cx equal to d. Okay. And now and we call it optimal if it satisfies the constraint. So if it's feasible and it minimizes the objective. So you can say in a sense that the ve um, vector x hat is optimal if it minimizes the objective and satisfies the constraint. constraint. Okay. Now this constraint problem, um, as I explained initially, so now we can express this as a, like a multi-objective problem or bi-objective, right? So in a sense, you can write this uh, mean of AX minus B square such that CX equal to D as this problem, as this minimization problem. Uh, AX minus B square plus lambda CX minus C, where lambda is a very, very big value. Why, why is that? If lambda is very, very big value, right? In a sense, you are only minimizing this, lambda cx minus c, right? And uh, so you put a lot of weight on the lambda, on this uh, objective function. In that case, the minimum value of this happens when cx equal to d, right? And then at the same time, you want again to find this minimum value, right? So you want cx is equal to d, subject cx equal to d should be correct and we want to minimize this ax minus p square so this uh, problem can be expressed as this multi-objective problem right okay where lambda is a very very big value and uh, here i explain that therefore to minimize this quantity we want the cx equal to d okay good now let's talk about the um, optimality condition for this constraint list score. This is very important using the Lagrange multiplier. So the Lagrange multiplier has many applications. It's used a lot in the convex optimization problem. You have seen it in the calculus to minimize the nonlinear function, minimize the system of uh, equations to find them. Um, 
to express the inequality, unequality constraint. Now here we want to look at the special example of the Lagrange multiplier for list score or constraint list score. So here is a setup. We want to minimize the norm of AX minus B square subject to uh, CIX equal to DI for I from one to P. All right, so let me write this one better. Okay, so here I wrote them in um, element wise format. You don't have to, you can also write it like this, which is perfectly fine, right? So the way you construct a Lagrange multiplier, first you call it L for Lagrange, X and Z. X is the actual parameter that we have, Z is a Lagrangian parameter. Lagrangian uh, parameter, right? So Z is a vector here. Here, uh, when you write it in the element-wise format, you can write Z in terms of Z1, Z2, all the way to ZP, as many as number of equations we have, or as many as the number of constraints we have, okay? So how do you form this Lagrange multiplier? You write this constraint, this one, plus you multiply this Lagrange, multiply this Lagrange uh, parameter by every constraint that we have. So C1 transpose X minus D1. So the way you write this constraint is as follows, right? You move everything to the left side, you make sure the right side is equal to zero. So for example, C1 transpose X minus D1 equal to zero. That's the one that compares equation. C2 transpose X minus D2 equal to zero. That's the second one. All the way to CP transpose X minus DP equal to zero, right? And then you're gonna go ahead and multiply this Lagrangian parameter by each of these constraints, okay? So that's a Lagrangian function or Lagrange function, L of X of Z, right? In a sense also, if you don't want to write it in element-wise format, you can actually express it like this. You can write it as norm of ax minus b square plus z. Now here a z is a vector times cx minus d, right? So here z1, z, z2 all the way to zb are the elements of z. So they are a scalar, right? Depends on how you want to write them. Because this multiplication should make sense. Now this d1 is a number and this one is a dot product, is a scalar as well. So these are all the scalar. You can also write it like that, okay? So I said Z is a P by one vector of a Lagrange multiplier, great. Now, what we want to do, the goal is that we want to find the minimum value or the optimal point of this Lagrange multiplier. The way we do this is like a calculus, we take a derivative of the Lagrange function respect to each Xi and each Zi and set them to zero. Remember, the x also is a vector. x is this, x1, x2, all the way to xn, right? So i is changing from 1 to n, and this i, or I can, for example, this is j here, j is changing from 1 to p, right? These set off, when you take it with respect to xi, set it to zero, we get one equation. When we take it with respect to zj, we set it to zero, we get another equation. Right, so these set of equations give us the optimality condition. Okay, let's see what we get here for the special example that we have. So, if you do that, if you take a derivative respect to first, actually the x's, right? Let's see what would, what would first. Let's see if, what happens if you take a derivative with respect to z's, right? So for example, if you go ahead and take a derivative of this respect to Z1, let's see what's gonna happen. The first term, this one is zero. All other terms also are zero because they don't have Z1. Only this term has Z1. And this one is gonna be what? C1 transpose X minus D1 equal to zero. This is this, right? The same thing for other terms. If you put them all together, you get CX hat equal to D. What do I mean by that? So this one, what does this give you? It gives you C1 transpose X hat equal to D1, 
C1 transpose, C2 transpose, X is equal to D2, and all the way to CP transpose, X is equal to EP. If you write them in a matrix vector format, you get this one, right? But we already know that. That's why I wrote here. Why is that? Because this is a constraint. But that's what you get if you need to take a derivative with respect to Zs. Now let's see what happens if you take a derivative with respect to X. Okay? Very good. The way I'm going to do that is the way we solve the actual the multi-objective problem or the way we actually solve the recess score problem. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this norm and write the norm in terms of the matrix transpose or vector transpose times the vector itself. So this AX my norm of AX minus B square, I'm going to write it as AX minus B transpose times AX minus B. So this is what, what I'm going to do and then the rest of the equation. Now I'm gonna take it with respect to X, right? So what you can do before you take it with respect to X is to simplify this. We have done it a lot. Simplify this expression, which is here, right? Very good. Now I'm gonna take it with respect to X and set that to zero. But wait, this part, when you take it with respect to X, this part, it's not really important, right? What is really important is this part. And this part is like a normal list score. It's like a um, normal equation that we find, right? You get 2a transpose a minus 2a transpose b. It's all coming from here. So from here, we get here, right? So we don't need to go over that because it's the same um, set of equation that we had in a list score and also in a multi-objective list score. So I call this one double star equation, right? So combining a star and double star, we will uh, get uh, two different equations that we can put them in a matrix format. What I mean by that is this. So we have something called um, 2A transpose A minus 2A transpose. First we have CX equal to D. That's what this one says equal to D, right? And then another thing we have is this. This is taking the respect to X. So when you take a derivative of C1 transpose minus D1 respect to X, what would you get? You get C1. How do I know that though? How do I know that, right? So C1 transpose X is like, is a scalar. When you take it with respect to X, you get like a gradient of that, right? And the gradient for us is always a column vector. But wait, C1 transpose is a rose. So you transpose that again, you get a column vector, you get C1, right? So that's about this. So you get C1 transpose Z in a um, vector vector operation, right? Or in element wise, you get Z1, C1 plus Z2, C2. For example, if you take it respect to X, you get here Z1, C1 here, here you get ZP, CP. Okay, good. So in a sense, you get this plus C transpose Z equal to zero. You see the parameters that we have are X and um, X and Z, right? So this 2A transpose B can move to the right side. So what you get here is this 2A transpose A X plus C transpose Z is equal to 2A transpose B and C X is equal to B. So if you want to write it based on this X and Z on the right hand side, it's gonna be what? It's gonna be 2A transpose A, right? C transpose C zero, 2A transpose B and D. And that's what I have, right? This set of vectors or this equation that you see here, I call it three star. This is known as a KKT condition or optimality conditions, right? So this matrix here, this one is called the KKT matrix that's what I show here or the optimality matrix, 
right? And it's the same for the constraint list score. So any problem you see constraint list score, you can go ahead and write this one immediately. A, B, C, and D are different. Otherwise, the format of the shape of a matrix is always the same. So I said that we have n plus p variables as well. Why is that? X is n by one, Z is p by one, as many as equations we have. So the entire uh, variable is gonna be n plus p. Okay, good. Now, <clears throat> very good. So here I said that this, um, let's say for example, you want to find this X and Z. What would you do? You write this like this, you write it as 2A transfer, like a very basic system of equation C0, inverse 2A transpose B, D, right? So now to find the X and Z, that's what you do. So you need to know under what condition this uh, KKT matrix or this optimality matrix is invertible. So I'm talking about that right now. So the KKT matrix is invertible if and only if C has the linearly dependent rows, right? And the stack matrix A and C, right, have or has linearly independent columns. So when I say C should have a linearly independent rows, this means that C either is a void or a square matrix, right? Remember? So in a sense, what we want to do is that we want to see why this actually makes sense, right? Not actually give any formal proof, but give you some intuition and intuitive understanding why this should be the case, why C should have a linearly independent rows and a stack matrix of A and C should have a linearly independent columns. 